Hi everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see the query pushdown feature in Spark Snowflake connector. Before that, we will see basically how the query flow between Spark and Snowflake. Basically, the Spark driver sends the SQL query to Snowflake using the Snowflake JDBC connection. And Snowflake uses a virtual host to process the query and copies the query result into AWS S3. Once the result was published to S3, the connector retrieves the data from S3 and populates it to the data frame. This is how basically Spark and uh, Snowflake will communicate. In earlier versions of the Spark connector, Spark uses the pruned filter scan, means eliminate the unneeded columns and select only the filter columns, sorry, filter records for the predicate which we are passing. And send that query to Snowflake and reads the data to a data frame and do joining or aggregations in Spark. So these uh, only uh, this pruned filtered scanned query only sent to snowflake and that selected data alone retrieved as a result set to a data frame other joining and the complex operation is not possible to be done in a snowflake itself it will be done through spark only so this approach typically is not ideal for more capable spark data sources data sources like snowflake which can perform these functions more efficiently so starting from 2.1 versions of a connector they introduced a Query push down feature, which will push down the query from Spark to Snowflake when it decides that that Snowflake can do better job than Spark. So starting from this uh, 2.1 version of a Snowflake Spark connector, Spark can push large and complex Spark logical plans as a whole or in parts to be processed in Snowflake, thus enabling the Snowflake to do more of the work and leverage its performance efficiency. How we can enable or disable this pushdown in a session? By default, the pushdown is enabled. If you think you don't want to allow the query to be pushed down to Snowflake for some reasons, then you can disable this by using this command. You have to pass your Spark session object to this command. So at any time, if you wish, you can you can re-enable it by issuing this command by passing the same Spark session object. Why actually we need a pushdown? When we have a spark, why we want to push the processing to Snowflake? So when users of a, both Snowflake and Spark may find that a large amount of a data which they would like to process resides in a Snowflake, so and to avoid the reading lots of data or transferring large intermediate results between the interconnected systems. So to achieve the better performance, most of the processing needs to happen close to where the data is stored to enhance the performance, similar to data locality in Hadoop. So when you have a large amount of data in Snowflake, it's better to process the data process the data in Snowflake. Snowflake achieved this much better query performance via efficient pruning of data enabled through micro partitioning metadata tracking. So in Snowflake, while loading the data in contract to traditional static partitioning, Snowflake micro partitions are derived automatically. They don't need to be explicitly defined upfront or maintained by users. It also delivers all the advantages of static partitioning without the known limitation like skewness of data or the maintenance overhead, as well as providing additional significant benefits. So if you take in Hive, you have to explicitly product, produce, uh, provide this partition keys and all. So based on that partition keys, it, it will decide which part, which kind of data needs to go to which kind, which folder. So that the query part performance will increase in Hive. So this explicitly needs to be handled in Hive. So by default, it's taken care by Snowflake using this micro partitioning concept. In this micro partitioning, by default, each micro partition will have around 50 to 500 MB of uncompressed data. So this reduces the skewness, only having a little amount of data in a micro partitioning and also it reduces the irrelevant data to be scanned by Snowflake. So additionally, this is also similar to cost-based optimization technique in Hive, where the stats of the table is collected to optimize the query performance. Similar to that, Snowflake scans the data efficiently by using the aggregate information on micro partitions like minimum and maximum values of these respective columns and the number of distinct column values. This helps to perform the joining operations or to do a complex operations and all in Snowflake. This also has a benefit of reducing the data that has to be transferred to Spark via S3. And the network which in turn improves the response times. So you are doing that 
complete operations in a snowflake so only the result set not an intermediate results only the final data which is going to be returned from snowflake which will be a small amount of data how this query plan generation happens this is where spark determines when to push down a query to snowflake so spark uses a catalyst optimizer for creating a physical plan which we call it as a dag to execute a query in a most efficient way here spark uses a rule based optimization to create the optimized logical plan from the unresolved logical plan and from here it takes and uh, creates a physic optimized physical plan using a cost based optimization so this is the place where catalyst optimizer inserts a snowflake plan as one possible physical plan for spark to choose the plan based on cost so if the cost of a snowflake is very less then it will push the query to snowflake for processing this is how spark query push down to snowflake works so now in this lecture we have uh, seen that how the push down will works and based on what criteria spark will push the query to snowflake in the next lecture we will see the salient feature of the snowflake and micro partitioning and clustering concepts thanks for watching